Hi, welcome to my channel. Um, today I want to talk about resistance and what exactly resistance is and how you can decrease resistance and work with limiting beliefs rather than try to eradicate limiting beliefs. I'm going to start with resistance because, and I don't quite know, again, sometimes I start these videos, I don't really know how I'm going to explain what I mean and what I feel inside about it, how it's going to come out. So it's a bit of a, let's see what happens and see how this comes out. If I manage to explain it in words that you understand, um, the words that I think that you'll understand and I might end up typing this video <laughs> if, that's, if that doesn't work. Um, okay, so resistance is something that we decide as a thing. So we hear about resistance. We, we know there's resistance to things. We, let's say, you don't know anything about manifesting and I'm gonna go back to a very early relationship of mine, my first ever boyfriend that I was with for five years. And for, uh, sort of a year before we ended properly, he finished with me because he started seeing somebody else. Now, our relationship was, he's a nice guy, but uh, it was unhealthy. Both of us were, we weren't good for each other, really. It was unhealthy in the way that he reacted to me in ways that he probably doesn't react, never reacted with other people. Like he was extremely jealous, extremely jealous to the point of it was, um, very difficult to deal with, but I did, keep, I was young, you know, and I kept going back and kept going back. He couldn't help it, that's the way that he was. And, um, but it, it wasn't, I shouldn't have kept coming, going back, but I did. Anyway, he finished it, he met someone else who he seemed to have a much better relationship with really, looking at it from the outside. And he was happy as far as I was aware. And I had heard previously, the day before, because the, the girl in question, was um, a year above me in college. And I'd heard that they were out together the night before and they'd been all over each other in this club. You know what people are like, they tell you stuff. They think they're doing you a favor, but they're not. Um, you don't, ignorance is bliss as far as I'm concerned. I never want to know things that are gonna hurt me. I'd rather, sort of burying my head in the sand, but anything like that that's happened that I can't do anything about or that doesn't impact my life as such. So if it, obviously if it was going on whilst we were together, that'd be different, but we weren't, so I didn't want to know. But anyway, people would insist on telling me. And so I knew this, and so I went home that morning and just thought, I wonder if he regrets it at all. I didn't think he did for a minute. I wonder if he regrets it. I wish he would regret it. I wish that he would change his mind. And then by the afternoon he had, um, to cut a very long story short, we got back together that same day. Now, had I tried to manifest this, this is the resistance thing. If I'd known about manifestation and I had decided, right, I'm gonna manifest him, thinking that he's made a mistake and asking me back, then I would have had resistance because then I would have thought, but I've just heard that they're getting on really well. I've just heard that they have this amazing night together and everybody could see them all over each other. Why would he suddenly regret that and want to come back to me? Why would he want that? I've heard that he's really happy. So I would cause my own resistance and it wouldn't have happened because I would have had that subconsciously and also slightly consciously going on. And I'm not saying it, it would have probably happened eventually because I would have let it go and then we would have got back together, but we would not have got back together that same day. So all those circumstances were still there, but I didn't bring them into the picture because I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know it was possible to think that and then for it to happen. I thought it was very strange at the time that I thought it and then it happened. I thought, how weird is that? But I didn't bring it into my conscious awareness. So it, it wasn't a problem. It, yes, it was It was all still there. It wasn't like it wasn't there and, I, and there was nothing there and I was cle had a clean slate. I didn't, all that was there, but it didn't matter because I didn't bring it into the equation. And that's what I'm saying here, really. Resistance is of our own making. So we know that, okay, let's, let's deal with what we can do about that. There's a lot of things that we call a resistance that actually, and we think, oh, I'm going to stop us. I need to clear this up first. I need to sort this. I need to sort that. Yes, there are. All you really need to sort, and we're talking about relationships here, all you really need to sort out before you look at manifesting this person, purposely doing it, is yourself. So you need to get to a point, as I've spoken about before, where you are happy in your own skin. You know that you will be all right if it doesn't work out you know you'll be all right, you know you'll be fine. You'll date somebody else, you'll find somebody else, you'll socialize more, you've got other stuff going on, you'll throw yourself into work, whatever. It's not gonna be the end of the world if it doesn't work out. So that's the stage you need to be at. And that's really all that you need to sort out is you and your feeling state around yourself. Because then you go up back into this relationship with a whole different feeling. You just aren't feeling the way you were feeling before anyway. And then you could say to yourself, okay, but what if I get back with him or her, and I have that 
old feeling again and that old fear and it ends again. What if I get back with them and they behave in this way, which I didn't like before? What if they get back with them and this happens, all that happens? Well, what if? Yes, these things might happen. And like with me going back with my boyfriend, all of those same problems were still there and they reared their head again. And we ended up finishing completely for good a year or so later. But I didn't bring that into the equation at the time. I dealt with it when it happened. And actually you will be at an advantage because you will know what I didn't know. I didn't know any of this, so I couldn't put that right. I couldn't deal with it in the right way, but you will be able to. And that's what you can do, what you can think to yourself to really release some of that stuff that you've kind of built up to this huge resistance to say, okay, yeah, that might happen. Um, and I, I might, might not be able to eradicate that fear completely. But if I deal with myself and feel better about myself and feel confident that it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. If you get to that stage, then you won't have those old fears. And if you do, they won't be as strong as they were before. And that's the main thing. Is if you're balanced and they're not dominant, it doesn't really matter because we all have those little fears and things. It's, it's just natural. So you don't worry too much about that stuff. What you do decide is that you will not go back into this. You will not go back into even trying to manifest this relationship. And anyway, we don't want to try, do we? You won't go back for even having the desire at the moment to be with them until you've sorted yourself out. If you're at the stage of obsession, too attached to the outcome, looking for it, looking for it, looking for it. You'll sort all that out and then you, but you will not worry about the little things because those things are little things at the end of the day. You can deal with them at the time. You don't have to deal with everything now because what happens is then you make resistance into this huge monster and it does become a monster. Oh, resistance. Just the very word resistance can make you feel resistant. So maybe don't even try and think, you know, think of it in a different sense, just part of um, there are some things that you need to sort out, but you can do that. And there are other things that you don't have to sort out now. You don't, you cannot sort out every single little thing that's going on in your head, every single fear or worry or doubt. You can't imagine how long that would take to work on all of that. And, and what you would be doing then is working on it in order to get with this person. That's what we want to get away from. That's certainly what I want to get away from on this channel. Um, by all means, want that person in your life, but put yourself first. So by doing that and just working on you, and so you're not so resistant to working on you, are you? What, what else is going on there? You know, you want to feel better. And again, go with what I work, work with. I want to feel 50% better. So if you're attached, I want to feel 50% less attached. If you are feeling resentful, I want to feel 50% less resentful. Um, whatever that feeling is that you're having, look at that, decreasing it by 50%, because to be honest, it'll probably be enough. And when you get to that, you can then decrease it further from there. It's much easier. I use 50% all the time, even now, with everything, absolutely everything. And as soon as I say it, I find that any attachment is decreased or anything that it is that I'm working on is decreased. As soon as I say it, I'm gonna feel 50% better, so hopefully that'll work for you too. So try not to think of resistance as a huge monster. Try not to think of everything as resistance. Uh, maybe ditch the word and give it another word. Just give it another word. Anything will do. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. So that's resistance, okay? Not everything is going to be a block because resistance does become a block, but kind of because we make it a block. So let's try to stop thinking of it in that way, uh, as a negative thing even. Do you know, it's all your perspective that you put on things. The story that you tell yourself about what resistance is, is what it becomes to you. So if you change that story about what it is, change your perspective on it, it will change and it just won't feel so harsh. And again, let's decrease it by 50%. And you can decrease, so you could say, I want to decrease my resistance by 50%. And you can start that today. So you say that just by making that statement, it will feel slightly less. And then you go from that point and um, once you start to feel better, and you can say, I want to feel 50% better in a week. You can give yourself times, I do. Um, and, and if it doesn't, you say to yourself, and if I'm not by a week, then I'm bound to be a little bit, even if I'm not 50%, that doesn't matter. I'll go on from there and do it like that in increments. Honestly, this will really, really help. Because like I said, I was, me and Harry did a podcast earlier. It's like two hours. How the hell we talked for two hours? I don't know. But anyway, we did. And we were talking about that there. And I said, resistance is really what we make it. So let's not make it this big thing. Okay, limiting beliefs. We all have limiting beliefs. It's a natural human condition to have limiting beliefs. So if somebody says to me, if I say something now and you will say to me, well, you've got limiting beliefs. I say, yeah, you have. <laughs> I know I have. Because they're inbuilt, you know, and I know that they're there. I know they're irrational. I know they don't really mean anything. And I know 
intellectually with my mind because I believe in this. I believe that anything is possible. And as soon as it's possible, we believe it's possible, it becomes probable. I know all of that. But sometimes I know there's something in there um, that is contradicting what it is that I want. So I, I, what I'm very good at now is being aware of that. And I'm thinking, and I can feel something there. And I don't, might not even know exactly what it is. And I think, okay, there's something there that's contradicting it. There's something that's out of whack slightly. So I have to go around it. How can I go around it? How can I tweak the desire slightly or change my perspective on what's going on in the 3D? That's what I would do. And that really, really does change things. If you can change your perspective, changing your perspective can shift you in an instant. It really can. Because you can go, oh yeah, I can see it like that. Yeah. Because what you're not, you're not changing the story. You're just changing the way you're looking at the story. That's all you're doing. So you're just narrating it slightly differently. So if you can do that, um, with limiting beliefs know that you can manifest with limiting beliefs because I manifest with limiting beliefs all of the time I've never eradicated I mean I I have got a very strong belief that I can create whatever I want because that's what's going on here but I also have a strong belief that I know that some of those beliefs are so deep rooted and those patterns that I don't even know what half of them are and I know but I can feel them there even when I can't put a label on them and completely describe what they are so then I know that I have to work around it and I could go into great detail of how you can work around things but it all depends on each situation each person so and I have to speak to each person on an individual level to, to give them the best way to work around it but I know my best way of working around it is noticing it being aware of it awareness is key once you're aware of your feelings then you can work with them around them and um, not work too hard at eradicating anything if there's something that you believe about yourself that you know is irrational but you can't help it like I'm not good enough I don't deserve it and all of that definitely work at that because it's nonsense because that's just a story you're telling yourself something would have happened to you in your life probably or the way you've been brought up or whatever that's given you this this belief and it all it is is a program so intellectually you know it isn't actually true but you can feel the program there you can almost feel the vibration of that so that work on that and you can work on that with subliminals you can work on that with affirmations um just keep telling yourself actually this is just a story i've made up because of this so you're just reminding yourself and what you're doing basically is knocking out that program picking a wedge in that putting a wedge in that program anything like that so that's key big beliefs like that those broad beliefs like I don't deserve it that's you don't want that you're always stuck with that but you don't have to be stuck with that really you don't but those little things like you know my classic example was um when I was talking to Harry and I think I mentioned it on my last video it was Harry said to me if you wanted to pay half the rent where you are because I do pay quite a lot of rent on my um, office but it's fine I can do it at the moment um, would you believe that you could half the rent just by saying, I want to manifest half, um, paying half the rent? And I said, on an intellectual level with this, I know that that's possible, but knowing what's going on inside of me, I know what's going on inside of me and what's going on inside of me says, it's a really big office. Why on earth would that ever be halved? I can feel that. I can just feel it. It's not really coming out in statements, but I can feel it as a vibration. And that's what you want to be aware of. So I would know that that wouldn't work for me. If I attempted to manifest that, that core program would win. So I go, okay, yes. So let's say I did want to pay half the rent. I want to pay half the rent, but I want to pay it on. I, I know I'm, I'm not going to have a bigger office. That's fine. I don't mind having half the size or even, you know, um, three quarters of the size. Maybe I, my head could, my subconscious would go with that. I don't mind paying half the rent. I don't mind having a, a smaller office, but somewhere that I absolutely love. That's all I would need to do because it wouldn't matter, would it, that I wasn't in the same office because I'd have something that I absolutely love. So if you absolutely love something, that's a good one to use, actually, um, when you're stuck with this, is to think, I'd be happy, wouldn't I, if I absolutely love something, whatever it is. So you can tweak it in that way and just say something that I absolutely love. Um, so if you're stuck on a person, you just feeling you can't get around this negative feeling that you have with them, you could say something like that. Because if you were in another relationship with somebody else, but you absolutely love them and they absolutely love you, wouldn't matter, would it? Wouldn't matter who it was. Because you'd have, because um, you can say things like, um, okay, if it's not them, somebody with a very similar energy that absolutely falls in love with me, that I absolutely fall in love with. Because then what could be wrong with that? But that doesn't mean you'll manifest that. It's just loosening up on the whole vibe around them. It just gives you an alternative. Once you've got an alternative, a plan B, you generally get plan A. Plan A, you do. I've never actually got plan B. I've always got plan A. So, um, you know, and I might have had to sort of go around and about and I might have had to tweak things slightly 
which, you know, before I became an author, I became a writer first. So I did article writing first, then became an author because it seemed more believable to me that I could do it by going up in steps. It seemed quite difficult to think that I could do it and sell books from nothing. Um, so I, I worked around it. It took me a while to get to that point to understand that, but I did. So you can do that. Work with your limiting beliefs, not, don't try and force them out because that in itself causes a huge amount of resistance, that bloody word again, but there you go. And that's it, that's today's video. I hope it was useful. I am an author. All of my books are listed below, all based around at the moment, all based around the law of attraction. The next one coming out isn't, um, but still around self-concept. I am a coach, I offer email coaching, I offer Zoom coaching. My son Harrison has a law of attraction channel and Harrison and I have a podcast every single week and I will list the next one. No, I list the last one. I can't really list, list the next one because he hasn't edited it yet. But I will list the last one down below for you and any other links that I think might be useful to you. And otherwise, um, other than that, thank you so much for watching.